good afternoon. I trust that those of you who are being affected across North America right now by the cold spell, especially those of us in the southern states, are doing your best to stay warm and stay safe. Today, I'd like to briefly talk about why post-millennialism is gaining some support in various theological quarters. Many of us are familiar with the debate over pre- versus post-tribulationism, the pre-tribulation rapture being the idea that at any moment the Messiah can come and rapture up the believers to heaven before the 70th week of Daniel, also commonly labeled the tribulation period. A post-tribulational position holds to the premise that God's people will be supernaturally protected during that final seven-year period, and then near the end of that period, they will be gathered up to meet the Lord in the clouds as he returns to planet Earth and defeat his enemies at the Battle of Armageddon. But whether one is a pre- or post-tribulationist, both positions are pre-millennial. So both positions affirm that the Messiah returns prior to a thousand-year millennial reign on earth from Jerusalem. A post-millennial view would hold to the position that at some point in time, that thousand-year reign begins, and when that thousand-year reign has concluded, then the Messiah will return. Now, if you are not familiar with some of the views of millennialism, I recommend you uh, access a resource like this, Three Views on the Millennium and Beyond. This is a Zondervan uh, Multiple Views uh, publication. I'm sure some of you all have uh, read or accessed uh, different volumes in that series. But the post-millennial view, as I understand it, widely believes that the kingdom of God is manifest on earth today via the presence of the Christian church and that the world will become increasingly more Christianized. The Messiah is in effect reigning on earth through the church and then at some point in future history, there will be a culmination point, and the Messiah will return, and the church will relinquish control of earth to him. Now, one of the major issues with post-millennialism, which uh, we in the Messianic community should definitely have, is, well, what do you do about all of these prophecies in the Tanakh or Old Testament regarding the restoration of Israel's kingdom, the Davidic monarchy, the Davidic throne, and the reign from Jerusalem. Frequently, what those who are post-millennial do is they allegorize or spiritualize those kinds of prophecies as being supportive of the reign of Christ on earth through the church. And so, yes, uh, post-millennialism on the whole is a product of supersessionism or replacement theology. Now, if one were messianic and post-millennial, and I have yet to ever meet someone who was, then the reign of the people of God on earth would have to be tied into the restoration of Israel, the return of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Jewish people to the Holy Land, and the establishment of some kind of Messianic Davidic monarchy. Uh, and I don't think anyone has ever worked through that uh, before. Instead, it simply is the church is reigning for Christ on earth, and we're waiting for uh, the world to become more and more Christianized, and we'll turn the planet over to him at his second coming. That's basically a post-millennial view. A pre-millennial view, 
that the Messiah returns before the thousand-year reign. We're going to see the return of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the Holy Land. There will be that 70th week of Daniel, a tribulation period, the emergence of a false Messiah, anti-Messiah, anti-Christ on the scene, a great deal of judgments, uh, not too dissimilar uh, from the Exodus and the uh, judgments God dis dispensed upon ancient Egypt, and then the second coming, the return of Yeshua, and the initiation of a thousand-year reign here on earth with him present. Now, why is postmillennialism growing in some theological quarters? Well, the main reason why it is growing more than anything else is because of the idea that well, in a premillennial schema, you know that the world is just going to get increasingly worse. Things are going to get uh, more and more bad. Uh, you know, there's going to be great apostasy. There's going to be a denial of faith. There's going to be lawlessness, all these terrible things. So why do we as the people of God have to do anything about it? And so the idea is that a premillennial eschatology facilitates a fatalism. It's uh, Things are just going to get worse and worse and worse. Why do we, as the community of faith, need to take the risk and try to improve the condition of the world? It's all going to be solved when the Messiah returns. Uh, we just have to hold on tight and uh, not uh, get caught up in the world system. And that is frequently the main criticism of premillennialism. Postmillennialism, on the other hand, has this idea, well, yes, sin is present in the world, but we as believers, as the uh, faith community, have the power of God within us. We have the Holy Spirit. We should be facilitators of God's kingdom on earth and as such make a difference and see that the reign of God manifests uh, here on earth. So it very much facilitates that idea that things are actually not going to get worse, but they're going to get better, and then they'll reach a culmination point. So I think one of the main reasons why postmillennialism is growing is because it doesn't have this idea that, look, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. There's nothing we can do, so we're not going to do anything. We're just going to hold on tight until the second coming. Postmillennialism instead holds to the premise that things are going to get better via the reign of the church on earth. Now, one of the things which does and should challenge us is some of the very first statements in the Lord's Prayer of Matthew chapter 6, your kingdom come, your will be done. We as the body of Messiah are to be a manifestation of the kingdom of God breaking into our evil earth today. And as such, we are to see as best as we can the qualities and the character of the kingdom of God make a difference in the lives of other people, those who are lost in sin. And premillennialism should not be uh, something which manifests in us being fearful or having this fatalistic idea about the world around us. Things are just going to get worse, and there's nothing we can do about it. In 2 Peter, we actually see how it's the righteous behavior of the saints or the holy ones, which is to hasten the coming of the day of God. So actually, if one holds to a premillennial position, it is the believers, the saints, the holy ones, fulfilling their God-given destiny mandate as a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, which is going to hasten the fulfillment of the last days and most especially the return of Yeshua the Messiah. And it is my sincere hope and prayer that today's Messianic community, as it grows and it matures into all the things the Lord wants us to be, that we can take a hold of that uh, in a much more significant way.